Hi there, welcome to Luminar 2018. I've never looked at this before, but uh, the guys at Skylum Software got in contact and said, um, hi, are you aware of our software? Um, are you interested in doing any kind of tutorials and basically the stuff that you do on your channel about this? And I kind of said, well, I'll take a look at it. And if, if I like it and genuinely start using it, then I will do some tutorials and things. Um, but either way, I will do an overview of it. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm not really that familiar with the software yet, but I'm just looking at some of the obvious sort of good and bad points that I've noticed to, to start with. Right, so what is this? Is it, it This is a photo editor. It's a, I suppose, as the title of the video suggests, a replacement for Lightroom. But I will say one thing at this stage, I wouldn't say it's a replacement for Lightroom yet because it doesn't have digital asset management. It doesn't have the libraries to be able to manipulate multiple photos and kind of like arrange multiple photos into catalogs, etc. That is coming later in 2018. There's no particular date on that, but it is coming later in 2018. And at that point, from what I've seen from this software, it will be a good possible replacement or alternative to Lightroom. It's much, much cheaper. I mean, I guess it's aiming at people who don't have a Creative Cloud subscription. So in my case, I have a Creative Cloud subscription. And I use a lot of the other software that comes with that. But for those of you who maybe just don't have the need for all the other stuff, and don't want to be tied into a monthly account, this software is a one-off payment, and uh, it's you're then sort of entitled to upgrades and things, and it comes at a reasonable cost of about, I think it's about £60 or something, so it's a pretty powerful image editor, a pretty powerful photo processing tool, should I maybe call it, for uh, £60. Let's take a look at some of the things. Let's Firstly, let's open up an, uh, an image in here. You can do that by either going to open image, or you can just drag one in, um, in this particular screen. So I'm going to just drag one in here, which is a, a raw image. It, of course, supports all different types of raw images. What kind of photo editor would it be if it didn't support raw images? So firstly, it's a nice small installer, right? It's 352 meg installer. So it, it, it it's, you know, it's not going to take up a load of space on your drive. It's not like a massive download. Maybe that's not so important anymore, but it's still nice when an installer is relatively lightweight. What you notice down the right-hand side here, if I zoom in on this area, this is your workspace area. And at the moment, you have nothing here. And this is one of the things that I like about this software more than anything, is that it's all about building up your workspace exactly how you want it to be. So you haven't got a plethora of stuff here that needs to be either collapsed down or expanded out. You add the stuff that you use, so you can add it for a particular photo. So for example, in this particular photo, I know that I want to add a raw develop filter. So I'm going to go to here, just click on raw develop. And if I zoom in here, you've, you've got your standard tools that would you would use to, to do the kind of basics around a raw file to kind of get it looking roughly how you want, get the exposure right, adjust the white balance, all that type of thing. And if that's all you want to use, great. You've got a nice clean interface here, no messing around. But if you do want to build them up, you can and you can save those workspaces. And of course, then you've got some other preset workspaces here, preset as part of the software. But of course, you would also get your workspaces here if you were to save them. So I like that, really nice and clean. Uh, one thing I have asked uh, of the, um, I have asked the team is whether they will allow this to be expanded out because I personally find that this, particularly on a 4K monitor, is not enough space. So you know, if I'm making an adjustment to the exposure here, it, I'm, I'm, I'm like, it's, it's tiny mouse movements that I'm making to make this adjustment on a 4K monitor. I want to be able to grab this, handle it, and and drag it out. So I've got a nice big wide slider, and apparently. That is going to be coming in a future update, which I'm really pleased to see because, you know, to me, this is just, it's just kind of fiddly with all these tiny, tiny things. Probably better on, a, on an HD monitor, but, um, but on a 4K monitor, it's quite fiddly. Because it doesn't have a catalog, I guess what Lightroom does 
is it brings in all your photos and it creates a sort of proxy of those photos, doesn't it? It creates a kind of version that it can use and show you while editing, a smaller version, essentially. So it doesn't have to work on that raw file all the time. What this does, if I kind of zoom in to the relevant bit here, as I make any kind of changes to it, in fact, it's not going to do it now, is it? No, it's not going to do it. Okay, let's just zoom in a bit more. And what you can see bottom left there is image processing. So as I make changes to this image, and maybe push up the... Sh okay, so <laughs> it's not going to do it now. It's going to prove me wrong completely. All right, let me just add a vignette on here. And no, okay, so... All right, so there we go. You can see that it's doing occasional image processing. And it does that when I first started using the software I thought it does that quite a lot and it's a, a little bit annoying that you can't always see those changes straight away so you're making an, an adjustment here and uh, it's it kind of reduces the resolution of the image until it's stop until you stop what you're doing and it processes the image and then displays the result to you but I've kind of got used to it now and the you know, as long as you're on a decent PC or a decent Mac, of course, you can use this on a Mac, it doesn't matter too much. You can sort of, it will process so quickly that you don't really notice it. And in fact, as you know, it's just there. It doesn't always do it anyway. I kind of thought it did always do it, but it doesn't. Uh, but watch out for that. It does sometimes kind of come up with the image processing because it, it's working on that raw file, I think, all the time because it's not creating any kind of temporary stuff to work on. I imagine that once they implement implement the uh, the uh, the asset management, it probably will do that. So really, the biggest the biggest point that I would say with a piece of software like that this is you've got to give it a go because you can get so stuck in your ways around Lightroom and using Lightroom, and I've used Lightroom for years, and it's so tempting to just want to do everything in the in the way that's familiar and comfortable. And I was trying to get this to do the same as Lightroom. As soon as I went into this software and took a kind of blank canvas approach and thought, well, I'm just going to work on an image and try and get it to look how I want it to look using the tools in here, not trying to duplicate what I'm what I would do in Lightroom exactly anyway it started to really come together and work work, work much, much better. Uh, it has full LUT support built in as well, which is really nice. So on this particular image, let me press C and do a quick crop of this image. I'm just going to lock the aspect ratio. And let's, let's say we'll take, take this image to, I don't know, something like that. Maybe, maybe there. And uh, I'm just going to get the exposure roughly. Yeah, it's probably probably about right. Looks looks about right to me. And just I can just remove this particular filter. I'm not using that at the moment. And I'm going to add in my. Yep, you've got to get used to where these are. I can't find it. Ah, oh, LUT mapping. Here we go. And I've just created a couple random random LUTs using some video software. And let's just pick one of these. I'll just load one in. Subtle film tones of one. And there you go. You've got a, a LUT applied to the image after the raw develop. Might want to add a little bit more saturation to that. <clears throat> and I think that looks really nice. I mean, those colors to me are much, much more natural uh, or much nicer to look at anyway than, uh, than that. That's kind of more like a snap on an iPhone. And that's more like a kind of uh, film look, isn't it? It looks much, much more kind of almost like pleasing, a little bit more moody. There are also uh, lens profiles. So they have implemented that recently. So uh, you can do your kind of lens correction here. This is taken on uh, an 85 mil Canon. So there's virtually no lens distortion on that anyway, apart from chromatic aberration. Uh, but um, you can get, you know, get do all that standard sort of lens stuff in here as part of the raw develop. I find that the filters, if I just re reset this image, which I'm guessing I can do by going here, reset all. And if I just remove these, I imagine I can I do clear workspace anywhere? Custom clear workspace. There we go. So yeah, so we're back to the original image. Well, it's a cropped image, but it's the original. And I find that these filters here that they've added, all of them really are just they're a bit too much. Um, 
Well, okay, that one's, that one's not too bad. But as soon as you click on them here, so yeah, I wouldn't really want to have an, have an image that I wanted to look like that. So let's do some basic ones. And yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I don't know, I just find some of them are really a bit too over the top. But you can, of course, reduce the amount here in this area that, you know, just reduce the amount of uh, filter that's actually used on the image. But even so, I... I don't think that I would personally use these too much. I'd prefer to either do it myself here on the right hand side or use LUTs that I've created or use LUTs that I know kind of in advance what they're going to look like. As far as the actual quality of the processing from this software, well, I mean, I haven't done any direct comparisons with Lightroom yet because of course this is using raw data from the sensor. This is a, this is using a raw image here. So how it kind of demosaics it and how it does all its processing and, and comes to kind of its RGB output will be different from each piece of software to you know one algorithm to another algorithm. That kind of does differ. It's not just a case of load this image in and it will look the same on every piece of software. How they do it will differ slightly. So you might get slightly different results from one piece of software to another. And from what I've seen on this, it looks good. I mean, I like the results that I'm starting to get with this. So let's just um, quickly reset the filters again. I'm sure there's a quick way of doing this, by the way. I'm not quite sure what it is. And let's load in another image. So let's just try this boat. What I uh, thought to start with is that the fact you can only work on one image at a time, as I mentioned, no asset management. I've said it three times now, I think that's enough. The fact you can only work on one photo at a time was sort of like, ah, I want to be able to flick with to another photo. But I've again, I've sort of got used to that. I like the... I like the idea that you can you bring in a photo and that's the image you're working on. You know, you you are not distracted then by other thumbnails along the bottom, other images elsewhere. That's the image you're working on at that particular time. And I sort of yeah, I just find you get a bit more focused with it that way. But um, st still looking forward to the asset management bit. I must admit. So let's see what we can do with this. I'm going to put in a um, standard. One bit of soft, one if um, filter that's used quite frequently, I think, is the Accent AI filter. So it just kind of does improvements that it thinks would be sensible for this type of image. So in this case, look, it's bringing up the shadows there at the at the bottom quite considerably, bringing up the saturation a bit. I imagine just do a small adjustment with that first. So we're going from that. Uh, to that and then I'm gonna I'm gonna add in a raw develop anyway, which it'll put over the top and One thing I do like about it is the highlights uh, control so if I bring down the highlights on here Really got some nice detail coming through in the clouds there now a little bit more contrast maybe and bah, 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 What else what else could we add on this? Um, oh, there's a t some top bottom thing, I think. Where is it? Where is it? Top and bottom lighting. Yeah, that's it. So let's just do the top. So this gives you adjustment on the top. It's kind of a nice way of doing, easy way of doing a gradient filter. Really, you got you adjust the top of the image differently from the um, from the bottom, and obviously can blend them differently. So let's just reduce that top a little bit to bring out the sky a bit more, maybe add a bit more contrast. And I think I will add a bit more light now that we've got that sky down a bit. And reduce the top a bit more. Yeah, not too bad. I'm fairly happy with that. And I wonder what that would look like if I put a LUT across the top of this kind of pre-graded image. Well, let's take a look. Try one of those LUTs that I brought brought out before. Great. Yep. Just adds that exact look that I'm going for. Just a subtle, fairly subtle change to all the to color tones to make it look a little bit more kind of rough and moody. 
Doesn't do too much, as you can see. But if we compare, uh, if we take the LUT out there and we've got this um, little button at the top here, just click that, that's the original. That's the processed image, original, and then we can do a side by side, sort of swipe across. I did ask them actually whether they would do um, a horizontal one of these. I quite like a horizontal um, before and after, but that's a nice tool to just see a before and after of the image. Um, you know, this is standard post processing as far as anyone who uses Lightroom is concerned, but it's decent and they've done a really nice job of making this software simple and it just it just looks great it's the kind of software that i like it's a it's got an appealing interface maybe a bit small i wouldn't mind if it, you could increase the uh, user interface size on a on, again i say on a 4k monitor here the user interface is pretty small for this video i know i'm going to have to zoom into bits i'm going to have to zoom into these areas otherwise you're just not going to be able to see them if you're watching it on a smartphone but Really nice. I would. All I can suggest is give it a try, because you just have to give it a go. Because otherwise, you will kind of only just do things in your sort of Lightroom way. Uh, it supports layers in a Photoshop style, so you can add, add kind of adjustment layers here over the top of other image layers and um, work with layers in that way. Honestly, I mean, I'm not going to go through any, all of this now because this is just an overview of the software. Uh, Export-wise, export is fairly simple. If I just do an export image, you've got export to JPEG, PNG, TIFF, JPEG 2000, Photoshop, or PDF. Standard kind of actual size, long edge. I often use kind of long edge stuff. And we can export in uh, three color profiles, um, sRGB, Adobe RGB, or ProPhoto. Sharpen image and quality setting works it doesn't give me too many options around pushing it through any additional plugins or anything like that but it works nicely if you do want to use this together with lightroom so you like the kind of lut support you like the interface you can use this currently together with lightroom by installing the plugin so you go to file and install plugins you can just quickly <clears throat> click on install here and it'll shove in a Lightroom plugin and so you you know while you're processing in Lightroom you can go to this and make some adjustments and work you know work together with the two of them which you may wish to do from you know if you prefer the stuff that's available in here um, the LUT support again is nice but you can of course get LUT support for Lightroom uh, so maybe not that many reasons in my mind to do that but as far as a standalone piece of software that gives an alternative to Lightroom and a great way of processing raw images or JPEGs or anything really, it's a really, really nice kind of um, offering. This is Luminar 2018 from Skylum Software. Let me know your thoughts. Have you tried this before? There's a link to the software in the description. Have you tried it? What do you think of it? And uh, if you haven't, then uh, give it a go. It's worth uh, worth taking a look, certainly, if, you're, um, if you do any kind of uh, photo processing. Thanks for watching, and um, I'll catch you soon. Bye-bye.